There is a strong connection between con extensions and adjunctions. This further demonstrates that con extensions are everywhere. Here's the idea. In particular, every adjunction is a special type of con extensions. What is perhaps more surprising is that there is a partial converse. I mean, we could only hope for a partial converse considering the generality of con extensions. But anyways, assume L and R are not a priori determined to be um, adjoint functors. If L is a right con extension of the identity on C along R, and if R preserves it, then L and R form an adjunction. To me, the second condition is the notable one. The way I see the condition that R preserves L as so is sort of uh, as encompassing the properties of the co-unit. Something like doing R and then L is an identity. By the way, the preserving con extension property is implicit in the first case too, so we have an if and only if for the second statement at least. Also dually, we can show the case for R if R is a left con extension preserved by L, um, etc, etc. Before proving, let's just recall the triangle identities for an adjunction. These will give us the ability to collapse diagrams in our diagram chases. Okay, um, so these are those, and now let's start proving the forward direction. We need to show that L, epsilon is a right con extension. It suffices to show that it is universal, as it certainly commutes appropriately. To that end, let h gamma be any other pair, i.e. any other extension of this form. But by the triangle identities, this is equivalent to this, grant, this diagram, right? Because we can collapse the left two triangles um, to the identity on R. So we're really kind of multiplying by one in a sense. But this already shows that gamma factors through epsilon. In particular, it's equal to epsilon followed by eight and gamma. All we need now is to show that this factorization is unique to conclude that L epsilon is indeed a right con extension. So okay, take any arbitrary factorization, and we want to show that this is the same as the factorization from before, i.e. that this is um, that this arbitrary factorization is just eta followed by gamma. Call this arbitrary factorization alpha, and it fits like this into the diagram. But this is just an equality, so let's add eta to the diagram. If we do this to both sides, equality will be preserved. But now the right side by the triangle properties is just alpha. So we have successfully showed that alpha, this arbitrary factorization through L epsilon, is just eta gamma as before. And we are done with uniqueness, and so this shows the forward direction. Okay, now let's prove the reverse direction. So we are supposing that L epsilon is a right con extension of the identity along C along another functor R. We are also assuming it is preserved by R. So let's take that last condition. Define eta as the unique, by assumption of right con extension, factorization in the following sense. So what just happened? Well, R preserves L as a right con extension. So there is a right con extension RL that is hidden here. Then 1D comma 1R is another pair that commutes, so by properties of the right con extension, there must exist a unique map eta from 1D to LR. So that's what we're defining eta as. We want we will want to show, of course, that LR is is an adjunction with unit eta and co-unit epsilon. To do that, it suffices to show the triangle properties from before hold. But observe that since the right map is the identity on D, the entire diagram is just this one on the right, with natural transformation, the identity on R. This is um, the first triangle property, so it just remains to show the other one. But okay, take what we had and take um, tack on an L map to both sides of the equality. With a little bit of rearrangement, we get that this is equivalently this equality. Well, even though this is obvious, I want to point out that we can, in fact, um, have a right con extension of L through itself via the identity on L. I do this so that we can write our overall equality a bit more suggestively. As you can probably see where this is going, removing epsilon from both sides of the equality yields the other triangle identity, and we are done.